So here it is. So we have Quebec, Canada, US, Brazil, and we have Russia because we had customer coming from Russia, but we always change the flag for the customer coming. <laughs> Isn't that so? Mm -hmm. That's right. This is a machine just like the one at uh, uh, in Littleton. Littleton. Yeah. yeah, in Littleton. Yeah. Right. It's our boring machine. So uh, we had those for a very long time. Oh, and y'all got two of them right here then. Side by side, that's right. Yeah. Look at the, the, the kids right here. This is an orange shield gravel. Yes. While he's machining this machine, he works on the setup of the next one. Right. So for me to be able to come into a place like this and look at this stuff like this, this is to me is like a kid in a candy store because I get this stuff from where I build stuff and uh, and have a little bit of a machining background. So it's uh, really, really neat to be able to stand here and watch this stuff to be done. So that's the raw piece right there. And then we're gonna take that and no, turn it. It's too good though, no? He already machined one side. Right. Uh -huh. So they come to the both two sides. Mm -hmm. Now he got one side. He did another, the first side, and the second time he did the second. second okay. Time. Okay. Gotcha. Become like this. And it ends up like that right there. Okay. He's gonna show you uh, one or two pieces. Okay. And, uh, third. okay. So cool. It's recording. Watch how close this thing is fixing to get to this to this chuck right here. That's close. So they're actually letting me do some stuff up here. I told them I wanted to, to weld or something the other day at the show. And uh, they set this up for me to allow me to do this. And uh, very cool.
bar. Come on. That's a raw block right there. Yeah. And, and then it, he's gonna machine it. The, the setup alone takes three hours. Three hours. And that's what he's doing right now. Wow. But the part is in it. Yeah. So he just saying it, saying it's at least. He just lifted the barrel with the, the magnet. Yeah, I saw it, yes. Yeah. And uh, we're ready to uh, tighten the truck on the on the barrel right now. Yeah. Oh good. That's good. Memory, memory, uh, you press start. I got a truck. I got no <laughs> Let's get back.
this stuff like this right here, man, just it cranks my tractor. I love, I love big machines and you know equipment wise, but I also love this right here too. It's awesome. It's mind-boggling that these machines are doing this stuff like this right here. Off of programming. Very cool. Flip it over, yes. That's a big machine it's right a there. Big machine. That's a big machine. It has right one meter of reach, and it's a five-axis, uh, five-axis lathe milling. It can mill in any direction, any angle it needs to with yeah. five-axis there. That's crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. I saw the wing collector shaft. Yes. On a big That's right, they're all piece right there. So we're coming in the cylinder cell. It's all the cylinder, the rod stock right here, right? Yes. Yes. This is one of our most performant machines. A lot of cylinder manufacturers, they're not able to machine chrome rod. Because you need very fast, very performant machines to do that. They'll buy raw rods, they'll do their machining, and then after that they'll send it to chroming. Not as good. We buy their chrome rod from the mill and we machine it. We machine it with the yeah. machines. Wow, look at that. Yeah. If you don't have the right machine when you start cutting, you chip the chrome up. Yeah, because that, that's some hard stuff right there. Yeah. Very hard stuff. But with the right tool, you if can you go cut fast it. enough, you go through the chrome fast enough, it's yeah. gonna work. There's 30 tools in the tone holder we never set up. With these 30 tools, we do everything here. Everything, all right there. Wow. It takes seven minutes to do a pin. Seven minutes, and it's done. Here 
goes. Facing it off right there. Boy, it's making a cut now. What amazes me is the amount of material that you can take off with that much fluid feeding to it like that, keeping it cool, and how fast. I mean, it's bringing it on down. It's going to thread it here in just a second. They take that pin right there in eight minutes. They do. Completely in eight minutes. It's probably going to thread it now. There it goes. There's the thread. Check that out. That is bad to the bone, man. No telling you. Very cool. You see, that's what it, that's, that's it right there. <laughs> Ain't no man in there. It's all robot does. You can see the barrel right there. Look at that weld on there right there. You can feel the heat coming off of them. Oh, yeah. That is, that's perfection right there. So I got the barrel. Oh, I see that, yes. Uh-huh. It's a wonder that a grapple don't cost a million dollars. After all the process of everything it has to go through to get it to where to work on a machine, it's just mind boggling. Volume? Yes. Volume is what? The older stuff. Final assembly. So this is where they put them together at, it's yes. right here. Usually we get the door closed. Right. And there's a positive pressure so the dust the dust stays out. out. Uh huh. Yes. I was wondering about that. And then you see they have all the components they need to put them together. Mm -hmm. So we got our heads and then we got more stuff at the back. A 250 ton, a 500 ton. This is just like the one in Littleton. Yes, uh huh. And then the side of the boom. Or loader. Yep. Yeah. So we're cutting some wood there. Yep. Uh, so yeah. We have a head of RPA. Just try to take all the plates and you do all the part of it. And all those are ends of, for, for the ends of the uh, pins right yeah. there. It's cut out right there. This is the big super, the bigger one. Uh-huh. That's right. I see that. Yep. Yep. Boring machine that does our job. Yes. Cleaning room, we have a pallet changer over there. Uh huh. That's cool. A pallet similar to that in Middleton. Cool thing about a pallet changer is it never stops. There's two tables, one that works, one that's in setup, and then they rotate. Yep. So it's a very it's fast a continu continuous process. It never never stops. Or exactly. 
You have to send me to outside. Yeah, okay. 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 Very cool. Yep. So all of that's the paint booth right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Ready to go for. Yeah, I see the trolley system up here on it where it can go through all the stations right there, and it shows out just like that. <laughs> Grapples hanging everywhere. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So it's a closed loop. We paint these in there, and then we track them outside. Uh -huh. right there. Wow, that's a big clamshell right there. Yeah. Wow. That's a hoss. Where where will that go to? Let me find out. Okay. I got it put together. 4048 HD. Yep, 4048. Yep. Yeah. Tons of heads right there. Look at all the pins. <laughs> and the cylinders. I mean, you look back at all the cylinders back through there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious. That's what they call a can-bend system. Uh -huh. There's, you know, you use this. When yeah. it's at the end of it, somebody comes and scans this. Uh -huh. It's going to start the manufacturing of a load of three. Okay. It's Three. Mm -hmm. When he's done using these three, you'll have these those. Should be back. I got you. So it's a never-ending cycle, though. Yeah. Keep them coming. There's a neck wrap. Yeah, I see that. Y'all see that that yellow piece on the bottom? That's a magnet right there. And this is going to be on a Cinebogan machine right here, right? That's right. Yeah, it's going to be on a Cinebogan machine. Look at the the steel on that too. That's here. These things are cool. It's so cool. See, this is a test station where they test it. They got it hooked up to hydraulics right there and got a hydraulic pump. And they can test it. And Rotobeck will paint them custom colors for you if you want to. It'll cost you, cost you a little bit of money, but you can get it custom colors. So there's a 750 grapple saw right there. He's fixing to put this grapple saw on this RPA. I can do that. I've, I've done that many times, taking my grapple saw off of mine many times. And yeah. Stuff. It's very it's cool. Before, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. You see, he's lifting it up. He's got a joystick right here. Huh? I'm going to watch you test that thing right no there. No yeah. problem. Yes. It just bolts to the bottom of that grapple then, right? Yep. That's flat out beast mode right there now, boys. That's a hoss. He don't stand over there beside it, so he's gonna get a size. So that's a seven cubic meter. They build a 10 
a tin that's bigger than that one. So this is a 915 loader. It's going to be going to Russia. That's where it's going to be going. See the cab on it? The cab to transport it down the road. This part right here pivots over. You see where it pivots over to get it flatter. So this is where they put the rotators and stuff together right here. Got to be clean with no dust. Very cool. Still on the Mazak? Yes. So those are in here. The four US blocks are there. Yeah, the look at them out. right there. Huge. Lots and lots. Look at all the ports. Yeah. That has to be a 960s river. Wow. With the a lot of and the Yeah. And then it's going to fit down inside of this barrel probably yeah. right there. Yeah. All the ports on that thing. Yeah. Uh, all the this is an RT504. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is what you run right now. That's right. Familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Got a bearing in there, that thing rides on. Yeah, he uses this press to press, the to press it in. Okay. Yeah, okay. So they come in, y'all actually do all the, it's just the outside exterior of it. Yep. It comes in and then y'all put it all together, the inside of it. Yep. Very cool. Loader, yes. Uh -huh. do oh, you, so y'all do that then, yep. okay. Yeah, it's how we in the camera. That's a, a picture showing order with the C960 diesel parts over there. Yes, uh-huh. This is a weird project. We sold it to a mill called Selgar in British Columbia. It's an upside down loader mounted on the overhead crank. Okay. Huh. Um, new string drive for it. What else are we doing? Yeah. At the moment, we're mainly testing new motors. So this is nothing but a test station right here. Yes. I mean, for all there's a stuff. computer, there's power units, and it's going to run 24-7. And we're able to simulate 2,000 hours in three months. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Those jaws are huge right there. Those jaws right there are still for a seven right there is what they're for. Yeah. Look at that tip. I know that tip is huge on that thing right there. Look at that table, that thickness of that plate of that table right there. Yeah. Holy cow. And it's dead square. Is that something that y'all made right there, that tabletop? No, we bought it. Oh, you bought it? Yeah. Golly. Control, they're quality controlled, but they take samples mm -hmm. and they double check what's done and they also control everything that comes from outside. So they use the Romer arm that's over there. Mm -hmm. He's load the part. So he's just going to check it for make sure it's within specs of what it needs to be then, exactly. right quick. So the guys probably hate to see you come in to pick up a part then. Les gars, quand ils te voient arriver à côté d'eux autres pour pogner une pièce, ils viennent se nerveux. Ouais, ils aiment pas, ils m'aiment pas beaucoup. Oh, that's cool. So that'll... Je vais prendre mon plane. So it's measuring it right there with that, yeah, without having to use a, without having to manually do it with a with a dial caliper or, or mic or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So the first thing he says, he's measuring the plane to make sure yes. it's level. Uh huh. Après, tu peux faire les cylindres, ça va te sortir les mesures. Tu peux aller concentricité de tes pièces. So he's gonna measure the um, the um, cylindricity, mm -hmm. the concentricity. Right. Go ahead. All the tolerances. So that little tool right there, I'm sure, is not cheap right there. No, no, <laughs> it's coming, so cool. Yes. Wow, that's nuts. <laughs> so there it is. I'm gonna come back here in a little bit, but uh, I just wanted to say something before we left here. Uh, just a very, very cool uh, process. Very cool company too. 
uh, to get for them to allow me to come in here and film like I did. And uh, I've been running the Rotobex stuff now for 11 years, and uh, I've always been able to have contact with them. So to be able to come up here and go through all their factories, a very neat deal, and I actually get to do something too. Very, very cool. <laughs> How cool is that? To be able to go into a world-class manufacturing facility like Rotobac and get to tour the whole thing, not just in St. Justine at the headquarters, but also in Littleton and in Groveton. And then they also manufacture in other countries too. Brazil's one of them that they manufacture in. Rotobac is truly a world, worldwide company. Uh, best in class log grapples and material handling applications from the regular grapple like what i use the 4552s and all those guys like that all the way to the rpa uh and even the clams and the orange peels and all of that other stuff that they build they build tons of other uh handling stuff and even their loaders their elite lo loaders their evolution loaders that they build too. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more stuff with me and Rodebeck. Uh, probably some of the shows and different things like that. Going to be working real close with Pierre, uh, doing a lot of different things, helping him on his YouTube channel, uh, which is Rodebeck. You can find Rodebeck on uh, YouTube. There's a clickable link right down below. The other thing that I want to note about this whole deal is they're metal. Their metal comes from Alabama. Man, I, I smile so big when they when they said that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this tour. Uh, great hospitality with Pierre. For We were with Pierre for 10 days. We were with Pierre and Lydia for six days. And then, of course, Pierre the rest of the time. But uh, my hat's off to all the people at Rodebeck. And there's several people at Rodebeck that are still working there today. Uh, the one gentleman that was machining the big square block of steel has been there for over 40 years. And there are several others that are still working there that have over 40 years of service with Rotobeck. So that's one thing I want everybody to realize is, is that Rotobeck is a family type company that, that is, is, you can hear them talking and them talking to me as we're talking. And then allowing me to come in there and get to, you know, get to run, run a machine, run a machine, you know, kind of interrupt their production, if you will. And uh, I could sit there, a lot of y'all talk about how you could sit there and watch us run machines all day long. I could sit there in that factory right there and watch those guys work all day long. I love that stuff. I, I love it. I get it. I understand that the manufacturing, the building and fabbing things up, but... Uh, Hats off to uh, Pierre and Lydia. And then Mark was the one that you kept hearing talk a good bit in the video uh, while we were touring the factory. And then behind the scenes, uh, Robert. Robert, man, I, I, you're awesome, dude. You're awesome. And, uh, and then Julian. Got to meet, meet Julian, too. Uh, they're two of the main ones um, under the wrote a back roof there and uh just a joy to be around them uh, uh a, a, a true joy i appreciate all y'all uh everything's right down below clickable stuff's down there and uh thank you wrote back thank you for taking care of me and jill uh for 10 solid days i know that wasn't cheap and uh you know it's I never dreamed that I'd get to do something like that right there. So I'm going to let y'all go for now. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.